Welcome to It's All Fine and Dangy, where we talk about community, health, culture, and all of the big and little things that make life good. Here are your hosts, Dan and Angie. Hello! That was totally Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> totally Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> Welcome to episode 28 of It's All Fine and Dangy. Thank you for listening. All right. That's it. That's it. We're I'm done. Wrapping up. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll pretend like Sometimes I didn't. Sometimes the music ends, I'm like, oh, wait, that's it? That's okay. it. Okay. We're done. Whatever. I'll pretend like I did not get incredibly frustrated with the fact <laughs> that our notes were not sinking. Why is that, Daniel? Why were our notes not sinking? Because I'm not going to bore everyone with the Apple updates, but if you don't have all of your devices updated, that doesn't all sync. And she's not good about updating her <laughs> devices. That's what you really wanted to say, isn't it? Isn't well, it? Well, I think it's in a household. I think you've got one person normally that's in charge of making sure everyone's updated, and I have, <laughs> and I dropped the ball on that. <laughs> okay, time for this and that chit chat. Not over coffee today. Nope, not doing that right now. Why don't we do coffee? I don't know. We always get so hot when we have coffee. It's <laughs> true in the afternoon. <laughs> if, if everybody understood our studio, it sits right in front of a window. And right now it is about almost five o'clock in the afternoon and the sun is blazing through the window. So if we were drinking coffee, we would be like really hot. Right Roasting now. in sunny central Florida. Yeah. Yes. But guess what? Thursday was a time for celebration. Yes. The 26th of September was my final day of classes. It was. <gasps> it was. <sighs> very, not to gush, but very proud of you. And I know a lot of us are. How come nobody took me out to dinner to celebrate or anything? You Because you don't like going to dinner, but you name, the, you name the place you want to go and we're there. All right. In fact, I was going to take you to dinner last night and you made dinner instead. Yes, I did. That's how you and roll. And it was a fancy dinner. But if you'd like to go anywhere you'd like to go. That's about a funny thing to say. If you'd like, like to go, go anywhere you'd like to go, <laughs> you name it, and we're there. Yes, yeah, so it was my last day of class, and um, I was I had a nice sense of relief. And I told a shout-out to Dr. Omar, my teacher, nice. my instructor for, for that class. But he's an MD and an acupuncturist, you know, a That's doctor right. of traditional medicine, so, or um, traditional Chinese medicine. So For, for our, our dedicated listeners, he's been on the show before, so I've met yes, him. Yes, he has. Yeah. And um, so a couple things. I wanted to say thank you to him for just letting me talk about life, because I'm like, yeah, it's last class. I don't really want to do anything. Oh, nice. So I think he stuck a few things in there that we kind of had to talk about. But of course. Yeah, we pretty much just chatted about life and what we're going to do from here on. And I did want to shout out to him because as of October 1st, he is starting his mobile acupuncture company. Very nice. And it's called Healing Point Mobile Acupuncture. And he's going to be very successful at that. He will be coming to people. And he has like a van that's all set up um, like a little practitioner's office. So how wow. cool is that? So he's going to give us some more details as we get a little closer. Um, but so far, the response has been really great for him. So I think he's going to do very well with that. So we're excited to let you know a little more information about that when it is actually up and running. No doubt. Does he have a uh, social media or website or anything up yet for that? Or do you know? I don't think it is launched as of yet. No, he is waiting because he's not. I don't think he's ready for what's coming. I think he's... You mean as in it's really going to take off? I think it's going to really take off, but he's seeing some of that already. I, he was talking about how they went and did a photo shoot for it, and they were at like a local park, and people kept coming up to the van. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, he, you know, it, there was just a photo shoot. So Well, he's on to something. So it's almost like if you drive that van around and you're not ready for business, you better just cover it with like a... a <laughs> Loth or something, right. you know what I mean? No doubt. It says coming soon and sure. get everybody guessing on That's a what great it is. sign for his business though. Yeah. And it's a great name, right? Healing Point. I like it that. It is. I right? do too. So, so excited for that. And um, this week I'll be house sitting. Yes. Everybody's heard about me house sitting before all the animals, but I got to be away from my animal for a whole week. What? You don't have an animal yet. You. Oh, no. good. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Yes, true. And we we will be feeling it and already have been because yeah. you've been gone for a day or two. And you in already fact, came and seen me. <laughs> I know. 
Yep. <laughs> so Angie's been gone for a couple of days and I already went over there. But, you know, that's really my only opportunity because during the week we've got kid has school. Yeah. I've got work. We got to stay on this side of town. You're you're yeah. quite a ways away. Which is good because with a week away, which not that I'll love it, but this whole week I do have some meal prep to do, yep. but I am also going to focus on my website, on kind of getting some of my social media posts kind of prepared and ready sure. to post and get some ideas written down of kind of where I want to go from here. Awesome. Yeah. Now get- it's serious time. I got to be a grown up now. Oh, well. <sighs> <laughs> well, I, th- I think what you're getting at is sometimes getting away is good because you don't feel like you need to do dinner or work on the house or whatever. Yep. I can eat like um, a beet salad and I'm good. And we can eat pizza every night. And no, I I'm can't totally make kidding. a beet salad here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally kidding. Uh, my daughter, as you know, is um, she, thanks to you, she is uh, a healthy she, eater now. She is a healthy eater now. Yeah. Yeah. So. She will push to make sure that we don't eat bad. That's right. Yeah. I'm happy about that. <laughs> yeah. She'll keep you on track. <laughs> she will. She definitely will. Um, so, yeah. So, with you gone all week, uh, you know, and just real quick to talk about, I just went out and saw Angie, the house she's sitting, or, or house sitting at. It's on a lake, huge lake. We walked all the way around the lake. What was it, like uh, two miles or something? And... We biked a little bit around the lake, yeah. too. And I brought uh, my bike out so I can bike every morning. Oh, good for you. After I take care of all the animals. Very nice. Oh, and there are... <laughs> how, uh, we went through this Eight already. dogs. Well, there's only seven there. Yep. Six there. Six yeah. there. Six dogs there. Six dogs. There's chickens. There's cats. There's rats. There's... No, there's seven. A partridge in a pear tree. Yeah. There's a lot seven of... Seven dogs, three birds, five cats, two rats now. I know. A bearded dragon. Yes. And she took the turtle. Oh my gosh! Oh, and chickens. That's right. Yep. So so anyway, it's <laughs> the farm. quite quite the it's farm so or the zoo over there. <laughs> but w- during the walk, I did. I'm not going to go on about this, but during the walk, I did get a chance to try out. It's a, the first opportunity I've had to really try out the camera on the new iPhone. Super impressed with the with the updated camera, the widescreen. We got to take some shots at night, and the ability to keep the shutter open on an iPhone is crazy. I can't believe the night shots on it are amazing. I know, super neat. And I, I really haven't had a chance yet to try it on a tripod. When you hold it in your hand, it'll allow you to keep the shutter open for 10 seconds when it's on a tripod. And it can tell the difference by subtle shaking. You can keep the shutter open for 30 seconds. So you can do like night sky. And wow. to be honest with you, I didn't even know that until this morning on my drive back yeah. listening to another <laughs> podcast. So I'll have to try that a little surprise. at some point when we uh, we get a chance to do a night shot again. Yeah. But anyway, so for me, as you know, with all the travel I've been doing, the schedule with my daughter has been a little goofed up. And so when she came back this week, um, Friday night, her and I planned a night to do nothing but just sit on the couch together and watch a horror movie. It's what we used to do. Uh-huh. And we watched Annabelle Comes Home, which is a new, Sounds new relief. You know, here's the thing. <laughs> it, it was pretty good. It wasn't really as scary as I thought, but I say that. But during the middle of it, a book in the living room or in the dining area fell. <laughs> and it, yeah, not that I think our house is haunted. I set the book in a weird spot right before the movie started. And you could see how it was slowly sliding because it was on an incline. <laughs> and it sort of gently fell off, but it scared the crap out of me and Rachel. <laughs> so we're pausing it, searching around the kitchen. <laughs> we're searching around the kitchen. We're like looking what the noise was. So anyway, it was uh, interesting. And Rachel, historically, she teases me about at the end of a horror movie, and it's time to go to bed. She'll be like... You have somebody in the bedroom. That's why you're not scared. And I'm like, no, I'm just not scared because I'm an adult. Let me tell you, with Angie House sitting, (laughs) Mm -hmm. I could not go to sleep after watching that movie. I had to sit up on my computer for like two more hours until I was like dozing off. Meanwhile, my daughter went straight to sleep in her room. And and let's really talk about who's scared. (laughs) Um, Daniel has to shut the monster doors (laughs) before he goes to sleep. Whatever. (laughs) That's different because there's really <laughs> monsters in the closet. <laughs> oh, uh, crack me up. Anyway, so that was fun, and, uh, and otherwise, it. you know, it's been uh, it's been life as usual, but it's been fun. Um, and by the time this episode airs, just for those of you listening, we will have already done our live drawing. Yes. For the Golden Warriors, Alex's Lemonade, Turn a Popka Gold contest. So. 
whoever you guys are out there, congrats to the winners. I know that we've got a pretty significant list of people that entered into the contest. Mm -hmm. And so we will be doing, or I'm sorry, we will have done the Facebook Live with Angie Remote. So yes. I'm sure that went interesting and hopefully that went better than it went <laughs> the last time we tried it when my face locked up in a weird <laughs> position and all that was was audio for the rest of the whole clip with my oh, face like that so hopefully it turned out well <laughs> regardless we know who won and congrats and we will be getting those prizes out to the winners so if you won and you haven't gotten your prize yet it it's coming is on the way <laughs> or it'll be hand delivered you know that's true that is an option save on postage if possible that's of course and <laughs> and because most of the in entries i believe i believe all but one of the entries are local yeah. Um, uh, meaning in Florida. So anyways, I think that really wraps up for this and that. That's it. We have... Uh, nothing a, a, over the top exciting. Nothing over the top <laughs> exciting, but but we do have a couple of over the top exciting guests this week. Yes, so we do. Stand by. We're going to take a quick break and we will be right back with our community call out. Are you looking for a terrifyingly good cup of coffee? If so, head over to the Coffee Shop of Horrors in Mount Verde, Florida, I accidentally discovered this place because the outside of it is done up like uh, almost like a haunted house. There's a skeleton or a skull on the sign and inside the place it's equally as spooky with memorabilia from comic books and art that's all spooky. There's a couple of fake trees in there that are done up like Halloween. But most importantly, they have really good snacks like donuts that are compliant with both the plant paradox diet and the paleo diet and their coffee blew me away. The La Lorna is the flavor that I tried, and it was amazing. And the staff there are amazing as well. I was able to meet with the owner or undertaker, as he's called, Nick, really nice guy, came up and told me all about how they prepare their coffees, how they can grind to order, um, how they make so many different flavors, and they're really creative names too. Um, all the casing and all the packaging is like spooky faces and different characters, but again, most importantly, the coffee and the snacks are amazing. I can't recommend the place enough. Can't wait to get back there because it's now one of my very favorite coffees. That's the La Lorna, again, I think it's called. It's the Coffee Shop of Horrors located in Mount Verde, Florida. You catch them at coffeeshopofhorrors.com. And when you go, Tell them that you heard about them on It's All Fine and Dangy. Hey, everyone. Welcome back. We are so excited that October is here. It is the time of year that we look forward to the most, mainly because it is home to our favorite holiday. That is Halloween. Welcome to our October theme, Halloween and hops. Two awesome things. Yes. Two things that go really well together, I might say. Indeed. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> so we're kicking off our very first October episode with two very cool guests from a very unique school right here in Central Florida. And this this school really goes along perfectly with our theme for the month, I think, Doesn't don't it? you? Yes, yeah. it certainly does. So we would like to welcome Ms. Heather Files and Katie Parrish, and they are from the Vocational Academy of Makeup and Prosthetics, or better known as VAMP. Welcome, Hello. ladies. Thank you so much Thank for having you. us. Yes, this is so cool. And and I have to say, too, we are doing this interview in, in this school, which is a, uh, which used to be a funeral home. So it's especially cool to me. <laughs> yes, we just moved in here a couple weeks ago, yeah. and I think, I can't confirm this, but I think we're the only makeup school that is in an old funeral home, uh, so it's pretty neat. It, it is, is really very cool. cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we said that at exactly the same time. So <laughs> silly. <laughs> so, so tell us what VAMP is to start with. So VAMP is a trade school for uh, aspiring makeup artists who want to do makeup Full time as a career. So we have two different programs. We have one that focuses on FX makeup. So you're going to learn, you know, obviously applying FX makeup, mm -hmm. but you're also going to learn a lot of fabrication. Um, and then we also have a beauty program that's going to focus primarily on corrective makeup, beauty makeup for, you know, weddings, productions, um, you know, everything from 
Oh. You know, beginner things to right. advanced. Yeah. yeah. So I get. So it's called. It's called FX makeup when it's like the horror stuff or the movies or whatever, and it's called corrective makeup when it's like beauty makeup. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. I mean, there's a lot of different terminology that you can use. And things that are very interchangeable, but I think we just try to split it down the center of right. FX or beauty, um, just to make it a little bit easier. So we we keep our programs separate, of course. Um, but we do have students that take both. Oh, you um, do. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, wow. So cool. I just didn't want to make it a requirement to take both because we yeah. do have people that come here and they are like not interested in one or the other. So right. I was like, eh. I'll I mean, separate it. It's it just sense. so cool to me that there is a school like this. I mean, when I found you guys, I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, not that I was ever into doing makeup or anything like that, but I just the possibility of so many kids that are creative in school to have something like this mm-hmm. available right around the corner. Yeah, no I kidding. Mean, it's it's pretty cool. It yeah. makes sense to me that you have it separate, though. It's almost mm-hmm. like when we we did a month of teachers uh, last month, I believe it was, and we talked about how uh, for some education, uh, for some levels of education, tracks make more sense. Mm-hmm. And not a lot of schools really do it. And that's kind of what that is. So if you know that you are absolutely going to do special effects in movies, then maybe it doesn't make any sense for you to do the other stuff. Right. So we have people who come here and they, you know, just want to be working in a lab. They don't they don't even necessarily want to be working on movie sets. They're doing prep work. They're sculpting. They're mold making. They're wanting oh. to run foam. And then we have people who, you know, learn that aspect of it in the FX program, but they really want to be applying makeup. So, mm. um, yeah, there's like a lot of different – I mean, and I know we're going to talk about that of like yeah. where our students have ended up and what kind of different things there are to do. So, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Super interesting to me. How long have you been in Orlando? Uh, we opened in 2016. So we have been here About for three years. Yeah. Okay. Three so years. you're still fairly new, mm-hmm. still kind of building a name for yourself mm-hmm. and a reputation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And hopefully we can get the word out there a little more so that more kids graduating or adults who th- have thought about doing something like mm-hmm. this can Yeah, be we like, have all ages. So. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. I bet because sometimes even later in life, I started school at 40, yeah. you know, and that's where I found my passion later in life. So, mm-hmm. I mean, we, you know, you can always learn. We talk about that all the time. And evolving. I'll say this, you know, <laughs> it seems like a short amount of time that you guys have been running, but they gave us a tour when we first started here, Katie and Heather, and... uh it is really impressive. The stuff we saw, like in the the sculpting, I guess, is that where the masks and stuff are? Mm-hmm. In the workroom, that's where the FX students are creating things in there. So, I mean, it it looks like a special effects studio for like a movie or something. It does. It's, it's so really cool. cool. All right, so we introduced you both, but you, can you introduce yourself again? Tell us what you do here, and um, and then Dan's going to ask a question that <laughs> I was trying to steal. So I won't ask how <laughs> You can steal right. it if you need to. All right. Who wants to start? Katie, why don't you start? Because I was just talking a ton. All right. <laughs> um, yeah. So I'm Katie Parrish. And I started here yesterday. It was actually two years exactly that cool. I've been here. And um, what do I do here? Everything. Everything. Uh, a Jill <laughs> of all trades. We have not been <laughs> able to knock, like, knock down a, a real title for what I do because... It's everything. Everything. It's kind of like that with a small business, yeah. though, because mm-hmm. even, you know, she's going to talk about what she does, but even what I do, it's like, there's such a range. You have to yeah, have so many course. bases mm-hmm. to cover, you know? So, yeah. 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 So what, when you're saying what you do, you're almost saying just what's available at the school at the same time. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, man, I, we... I do a lot. Yeah. So give, give us some examples. Recruit students. Uh, recruit oh, students. Nice. So, you know, answer emails, phone calls, help brian if he needs help help Mm -hmm. the students uh i do a lot for heather too um i do anything that she can't do because she gets really overwhelmed with work sometimes so she keeps my sanity yeah very nice Mm -hmm. (laughs) that's great chat a lot yep do a lot of moral support so you work as a good team together definitely yeah i i suppose it's obviously it's a very creative job but you've got to manage the business side of it too mm-hmm. so Absolutely. it's having to there's a lot to that obviously oh, sure. yeah. knows, so and when yeah. i was hiring katie too i was looking for somebody who was able to do makeup because both of us i was gonna ask do makeup that. outside yes. of mm-hmm. working here right um because it's hard to give somebody a tour and tell them about what we do and answer questions if you don't do it yourself yes. you of know? course yeah so, you have to know the ins and outs of the business mm-hmm. so outside of you know working here she, we both work at universal we both do makeup mm-hmm. outside of this so okay well i was going to ask how did each of you get into this field mm-hmm. to begin with well um actually 
the magazine's right over there. Um, it's Fangoria edition 219, and in the back, very back page of it is um, uh, it was an ad for a makeup school. Right. And I saw it when I was younger, uh, like 2003, I believe. Right. And I was only 10 years old, and I saw it, and mm. I decided that would be cool. But then I went to hair school, hated it. Um, I worked in a salon for a little bit to get by out of high school, yeah. and sure. then I found out I liked makeup a lot better. Right. I moved up here. Heather was actually supposed to be my teacher, and after three days, she disappeared. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I peaced um, out. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, we vaguely met each other then. I don't, I probably doesn't even remember me from there. I don't know. No, I do. You do? you had pink docs, and I had pink That's docs. That's right. Oh, nice. I remember. It was so meant to be. We still have the yeah. same pink docs, too. Oh, yeah. nice. <laughs> um, so... Uh, yeah, I'm, I kind of met her there, and then um, I got hired at Universal later on, and uh, we became Facebook friends, and she posted about this job, and I got hired, and now mm-hmm. we, we work at Universal together, we work here. Um, pretty much everyone in the school works together at Universal, well, except just, for our beauty teacher. We just hired a new yeah. beauty teacher. She doesn't work at Universal with us, but So I, she does more of the... Um, uh, correction makeup yep yeah okay. so Correct. she does more beauty mm-hmm. makeup and actually she was one of my first friends that i met when i was started doing makeup so she oh, cool. she and yeah. i worked together at mac for like years so cool so what mm-hmm. kind of stuff do you what kind of makeup do you do at universal is it all for halloween horror nights is nope. it throughout the whole entire year for special the shows they do and, or it's i about suppose like, it's both it's yeah it's about i would say a full like six months of uh different seasons so we have halloween and we have grinchmas and then we go into mardi oh, gras yes. yep. okay. um but it's a full it, it, it like all runs into each other mm-hmm. right and then it stops and then it picks back up again in about it's, august so. it's changed a little bit too because um this is my ninth season with them and like a couple of years ago the makeup department was a little bit less uh like well I don't want to say well formed but it was a little bit more like loosely formed so mm-hmm. they would have um people called in for like random stuff now they have like a set team of like uh what they call casual employees who that so they'll call the casual employees before they just call like a seasonal employee Oh I got you um so but you know they used to call when like the Jimmy Fallon's Tonight Show was coming here they'd call in makeup artists oh. like so i'd get called for that which was cool oh, that's no very kidding. cool that's very yeah. cool like okay. harry potter when the, the special event that they used to do and then they stopped that yeah the wizarding world what you're you're not happy about that i know mm-hmm. <laughs> Love harry potter. yeah uh but yeah so now they i mean they obviously still have those kind of events but we don't get the uh call because we're not there as often we're here and i'm trying to Build a business. Yep. And right. Help the students. And, you know, I, when I opened the school, it was because I wanted there to be a place for people to go to learn how to do something creative for work. You know, yeah. mm-hmm. I went to college and I one of my majors is in art. Mm-hmm. And um, I hated that, like every person that was kind of supposed to be like a, a educational mentor to me was very like, oh, that's nice that you like art. But what do you want to do? It's like, well. I want to, I want art to be involved. Yeah. Like, why do you like think I want to do something creative. Like those jobs yeah. exist, like help, you know? And it was kind of like, well, you know, you could do that as a hobby, but like, what do you want to do? It's like, yeah. Oh, come on. Right. Oh, I hate that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So opening this school felt very, uh, it just made Cathartic. sense. Cathartic. Oh, yeah, yeah. And if it, it yeah. made sense because yeah. it was like, I want people to go to a place that they can like put their trust in, that mm-hmm. we're going to teach them what they need to know, that they're going to leave with like, hands-on knowledge of what to do because the, you know it does take a lot of trust when you're going to a school sure. like this yeah. because most people enter here and they they know a little bit but they're trusting us to be teaching them what they need to know right you yeah know? because well, i think you gain a lot of credibility both of you in the fact that you do this this is what you mm-hmm. actually do successfully um and, but i wanted to ask you heather as well how did you get into the field to begin with Um, so I, that's a good question. How did I get into this field? I, so I went to college. I actually graduated from Duke. I got, I had two degrees there and I thought I wanted to go into advertising. And then, um, Hmm. like one of the last classes I took at school was on the ethics of advertising. And I was like, oh my God, I can't do this. I I do not feel ethical (laughs) at all. That's admirable though. You know, I, I have like a, a, 
strict idea of like right and wrong, right? Sure. So like if I was doing that every day, I was like, I don't think I'd be able to sleep. Right. Yeah. God forbid my sleep be disrupted. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I agree. <laughs> yeah. So um, then I was like, okay, well then I need to do something creative. And I, I knew that I really liked, you know, doing my own makeup. I liked doing my girlfriend's makeup. I liked doing, you know, Halloween makeup. I, mm-hmm. um, I just really enjoyed it. I always liked weird stuff you know I was into weird stuff (laughs) right um so I I started doing makeup I went to makeup school I um started working at Universal I started working at Mac and um you know the more I did it and I'd see new people coming in and it was like they didn't have the skills that they needed you know they went to a a school somewhere and it was like they kind of knew like a cosmetology vocational school and I'm sure you probably you went to one of those schools right I went to a cosmetology school and the makeup portion, I don't even remember it went by like Two that. seconds. It, it was literally mm-hmm. like two seconds. Just to get that certificate or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I remember on Halloween, I was actually doing makeup on uh, everybody in the school. And people were like, how do you do that? What do you do? And it was just like stupid, you know, at, like little stuff that you see on like the internet. It was nothing yeah. like what we can do now. But um, yeah, that's when I really was like, like hit me like, man, I want to do this. You're, I'm good at this. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's uh, going into that, actually, uh, I wanted to say this earlier, but it reminded me uh, people come here and it's like they've done a little bit. Right. They've watched YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. They follow, Mm -hmm. you know, makeup artists on Instagram that they like. They kind of know how to do this and that. You kind of hit a wall when you're self-taught. That course. is, mm-hmm. I don't know, what, what do I do next? Because yeah. people can be very protective of the, like, knowledge. The secret sauce, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. the secret sauce, exactly. So, uh, you know, people come here and they're like, I have done X, Y, and Z, but I don't really know how to do this. I need mm-hmm. help with yeah. this. So. This just elevates them to the next level. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so how does it help? Um, you've had graduates already, mm-hmm. right? Because how long is a, a course again? The FX program is five months. Five so, months. Yeah. Okay. So what have you, how have you seen um, the education that they get here, the hands-on that they get here? How have you seen that um, be beneficial for them? Or mm-hmm. what am I trying to say? Wait, you mean how, how have you seen them apply that yeah, in their career? Yeah, how they apply that in their oh, career. There, there yeah. you go. Yeah. Think um, for me, baby. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of students that graduate. I will. One of the questions I ask people when they come in, it's like I and I interview all the students that are going to enroll and I ask everybody, you know, like, where do you see your career going? Like, what do you want to be doing in 10 years? And everyone's like, I want to be on a movie set, you know, and that's of course everyone. everyone. And, the, and that <laughs> that's a is, standard answer. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I feel like doing that from like going from school to that in 10 years, you are working. Yeah. That is like a quick there's turnaround. A, yeah, yeah, there's no uh, breaks. Yeah, there's yeah, yeah. No traveling. You're not doing that. <laughs> no, yeah. no, you are working. <laughs> so, right. um, but everybody says that. But by the time they get out, I think they start realizing, oh, I, I, there's like a path I need to kind of make for myself mm-hmm. to go a different direction. So I have, we've had graduates go into uh, like scenic shops. So mm-hmm. they'll go into making things that are going into Star Wars. Uh, they're working. Oh, cool. For, yeah. So they're basically working for these third party fabrication shops that work for Disney or they work for Universal or, you know, wherever it might be. Oh, might you, even... you say Star Wars, you mean the park? The park. Okay. Correct. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Cause Orlando, right? So, uh, yeah. So, um, all the theme parks, the more they build, way more jobs are being, you know, utilized for that. Not just sure. at the park, but people who are making the fiberglass, you know, scenery that's going yeah. in there. Or, yeah. And our students learn how to work with fiberglass. So we've had one shop in town has... Shout out to them. Oof. Yeah. They have... Shout I, them out. Uh, Mad Fab. Yeah, Mad Fab. Great. They have hired yeah. a bunch of our graduates and they... That's amazing. Yeah. So they're like mm-hmm. really applying what they've learned here. They're learning new skills. They're really kind of building on what we have taught them here. Um, but it's great because a lot of our students and our graduates, they're kind of... They're nerds, you know? I mean that yeah. affectionately. So oh, they, I love it. Love I am them. too. Yeah. 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 They love Star Wars. They love, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy and they're sure. getting to... They're getting as close as they can right now to working on that franchise. You yeah. Know? Um, so we have students that go into that. We have students, obviously, that get hired to do makeup at Disney or Universal. Um, sorry, I just turned away. So, so it's oh, really no, it's very local that they're mm-hmm. able to to get these jobs, mm-hmm. yes. which is amazing. But we also, I just had a student text me. I want to say it was last oh, week. Oh, this is awesome. Yeah. yeah. She texted me and was like, I got hired at that job you sent me. It was for a medical position. So she's making um, like prop bodies for medical mm-hmm. training purposes. Full oh. silicone bodies. Yeah. Oh, wow. Nice. She says, oh, they're flying me to London. I'm That is they're amazing. They're flying me to London 
even to train. I was like, mm -hmm. oh my God. So the amazing. possibilities are pretty endless with this kind of career because yeah. I immediately mm -hmm. thought of special effects makeup for movies, for theme parks. Uh, uh, what did you call it? Correction or corrective? Corrective. The, beauty the beauty makeup. Beauty makeup, uh, yeah. makeup for, um, you know, maybe somebody that's doing a show mm -hmm. or a news anchor or, or something weddings. like that. Uh, Wedding weddings. Fashion yeah. show. Oh, that's big. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there's all kinds of possibilities. I never would have thought of something the like that. The career paths are, there's so many different ways that you can go. Like, you know, like prop building, fabrication. Um, I know, I think a, one of our uh, old graduates, actually a couple of them, I think, worked on help building houses at Halloween Horror Nights this year. And then we also have them that they're also doing makeup at the same time at Universal. Mm -hmm. So That's they're, they're kind of getting to do it like around the clock, yeah. which yeah, no is kidding. really, really cool. Yeah. yeah. And, and then I think of something even, I don't know if this is kind of the same field, but I think of things like um, prosthetics yeah, yeah. for yeah. like breast and, you know, some people that have missing noses. Yes. Or oh, you can absolutely do like that. that. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that's, you know, I think of. When you when you said medical, that's what I thought you were going to yeah, say. Yeah, I never would have yeah, thought yeah. of that. For mm -hmm. I don't know why. I guess it's it just surely makes sense. Mm -hmm. it's yeah, a, yeah. And, and we have a lot of students also do uh, moulage training. So that's basically mm -hmm. like mass casualty events that um, first responders are trained to handle like these situations where they have like many many people who are injured. And Kate, you've worked on a lot of those. Yeah, I've worked on a lot of them. Um, a team that I worked with for a long time. They. Um, they do like uh, MCOs, like mash casualty training, and they have. It's funny because they um, right off of the runway, they actually have a crashed plane, and they do these trainings with these volunteers in like neon shirts, laying mm -hmm. all over the place, covered in blood, and people are taking off on the runway right next to them. So they're looking <laughs> down and they're like, "Wow, wow, yeah." I didn't so know that, yeah. And they and they have like I'm talking last time that we did MCO, there was probably 40 to 50 like engines and rescues that had pulled up with helicopters, full lights and sirens, and people are taking off on the runway right there. So I can only imagine their That's mind crazy. when they're like crash plane, <laughs> tons of bodies on the ground, and yeah, they're there's Googling it yeah. later. They're like, "What happened? What? Yeah, they let so, me off the plane. So yeah. how how does how does being a makeup artist or how does that come into play with that? So um, the way that those work basically is um, tons of volunteers and there are a lot of them are like EMTs, paramedics. Um, they're in school mm -hmm. and they'll like volunteer for this and they'll come in and they'll be like, I've done events that have been like 1200 people and wow. they come in with a little card. They'll sign in, they'll get a card and it'll be like black, red, green, blue. And they're all different levels of like injuries. So if you're black, you're dead on arrival. And I typically handle those and we bloody them up a lot and we oh, get all these what? people oh, out. So they're making So it, it looks like yeah. a real scene Correct. so that yes. kind of you can get that shock of what it would look like to really mm -hmm. see somebody injured Correct. with you yeah. know, guts hanging oh, out. Yeah. That is amazing. I yeah. never knew that was a thing. Uh -huh. Way that more effective cool. than just laying there with an index card that mm -hmm. says like Dead. bullet wound. Yeah, yeah like because that. you've yeah. got, you know, you have to prepare people mentally. So for are that these actors that are doing, that are laying around? They're all students that are in like the medical like industry. Yeah. So like it can be like paramedics, EMTs, nurses, they're, they are all like, well, I'm not sure the county reaches out to the schools and asks people to volunteer. Yeah. Right. Um, but I know some really cool ones that we've done have been like, um, they always hold it like, a, I don't know what the place It's in Pine Hills. It's like a big like auditorium over mm -hmm. there and everybody will come in. They'll put them on buses and actually ship them out to different hospitals around, not tell the hospitals and they'll show up. And they have to, and that's how they train for things, you know, that happen like pulse and stuff. Like people yes. pull up yeah. with mash, like stuff like that. So it's, so it's basically it's trauma so the, training. And these yes. kids exactly. and, and whoever's wow. working thinks that it's a real thing going on. They don't think it's real. They realize okay. what's happening when it comes up, but they want but it to chaos. act like it's real. Yeah. They want yeah. that moment. They want all of that panic, but you to be able to be calm and be able to train and look and they'll try to like figure out what's going on. But you also have a card on you as, as one of the volunteers that says what your real you know, injuries, injuries are. So, um, Very I've cool. helped some of the kids get jobs doing that as well. Wow. Um, but it's like, it's really helpful. Like, wow. you know, it can be really helpful for first responders. I mean, I would like to do that just as a citizen. Yeah. It sounds really neat. Just to be a part of something like that. Yeah. I mean, it Super sounds cool. really cool. So mm -hmm. I was going to ask who the students practice on as it relates to special effects and prosthetics. And mm -hmm. I suppose that's one instance of it. it. 
what are the other sort of examples so of that? When they're in school, do you mean like when they're in school? Yeah, yeah. yeah. How are they practicing? So they're practicing on each other primarily. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So like uh, you'll partner up with somebody for whatever project it may be, and then you're basically working on each other. When we have an even number of students, which perfect, I think yes. honestly <laughs> is the first time we've had an even number of students since we opened as this class. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we don't have to worry about a three person group, which is always so like annoying in a way yeah. because then someone has to like share a partner or mm-hmm. you know whatever do this do. half of the face yeah right. yeah yeah so uh yeah we have an even number of students right now which is great so they all practice on each other and uh you kind of especially with this class because we have 14 people they have a good um you know amount of of different faces and uh, you know to tr- yeah. to practice on because it's good yeah. to have different face shapes different features and- oh, of course yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah i was just wondering because like places like the massage therapy schools they'll do it di- like saturdays or where the public can come in mm-hmm. and you pay a certain mm-hmm. amount of money and you know which is very discounted because mm-hmm. they're right. not professionals yet at, but I'm assuming that money goes towards the school or, you know, for... It's like cosmetology school. When I yeah. was in there, you know, that was our best practice to get into the real world. It was people come in, discounted rate, get their hair done. Mm-hmm. Uh, we did, like, makeup application. I never actually saw one of those. But, yeah. you know, right. things like that. We, we get calls sometimes <laughs> for people Sorry. looking to see if we do things like that. But Yeah. Um, yeah. There's a... I don't want to... I don't know if they're a comp- competitor, so I won't name them right now. But there's a school for, like, music and stuff. And I know... No, well, they're not. Oh, they're not full no, sale? you can say it. Okay. No, no. So I know that back when we were in a band you could go there and get like your stuff recorded and it was you had a like a chance that it was going to be great or it could be awful but it was a student kind of learning (laughs) so that's the same kind of thing yeah Mm -hmm. no we're i I don't think we have any rivals in orlando we're pro everybody in orlando i don't don't think we have rivals i mean we have like you sound like us though we we believe there's enough success for everybody we really do exact same thing Mm -hmm. i feel like there's the right school for everybody you know yeah i think people are like well what makes you guys the best i'm like i don't know we were the best of the people who think we're the best yeah, that's right like, yeah. we're doing what we think is great mm-hmm. and if you do too then we're probably the right place for you and yeah. if you think what we do stinks then mm-hmm. see you later yeah, yeah. yeah. You're have to go people somewhere will call else. all yeah. the time and ask like well do you recommend this school or your school and i'm like i'll send you our curriculum and you can look over it because yeah. you that's know, your decision not one school like there's no two schools yeah. that are going to teach the same thing to you so sure. yeah it's better to just send the curriculum over and if you want to learn one thing that we teach yeah. and they don't or maybe they teach something you know yeah, so, and you have to connect yeah. with the people there and mm-hmm. you're the one paying the money ultimately so mm-hmm. and you're, you're investing your time so you're the one that you're a big person you have to make correct yeah. and well, we have, we have a make lot a decision of, <laughs> we have a lot of people come in and they're like i like how your school feels so like intimate and small you know because i like that too i yeah. i think that's we're great. like a little family you know mm-hmm. i mean mm-hmm. if people need something they come see me you know oh heather i need to talk to you about something later okay come to my office well you obviously know? you said that you have so many people from universal that have <laughs> signed up for your school to yeah. take it to the next level yeah so that's so, pretty awesome yeah we have a lot of characters sign up or, or apply or call to come yeah. in mm-hmm. they go through the event and they you know really enjoy that time when they're sitting in the makeup chair and they're seeing cool things happening yeah. and they want to do it so we have quite a few uh students who were characters that are still characters actually yeah. and there's you know they mm-hmm. can do their own makeup pretty soon mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> right? oh i imagine that's hard to do Is isn't it? it it depends on if you practice on yourself because i I can do my own beauty makeup. I've tried to do like face painting on myself and it was like I was doing it with my left hand with my eyes closed, you know? It was like, what the heck happened? So I I just look so good on everybody else. I could I could do it on somebody else on myself. I'm not used to like doing that in the mirror. So it was like kind of crazy. I was like, Oh my god, I'm bad at this. So Mm -hmm. I'll have somebody else do the FX Uh makeup on me. So you know, we we dabble in the uh, FX stuff for Halloween. Certainly nothing to the caliber of this place, but I find that like my hands are shaking when I'm mm-hmm. trying to do my own face in the mirror. But if I could work on somebody else's face, I could do a much better mm-hmm. job, mm-hmm. you know? See, well, I have this theory too, though, about, you know, when we'll have uh, like girls come in and sign up, women will come in and sign up. They feel comfortable doing makeup to a certain point because, you know, women, we're you're in this society, we're like raised to be doing You've been makeup. Doing yeah, for years. Huh? And I have a lot of gay men who mm-hmm. enter the program who also practice on themselves, they practice on their friends. Oftentimes, I don't want to make any blatant statements. Oftentimes, it's straight men that have had the least amount of practice because they're not in their bedrooms at eleven o'clock at night. Of course, practicing right. their cat eye right. you know, or whatever <laughs> exactly. it might be. So, um, that being said, we do have you know guys who've started here and they practice all the time. You know, they're practicing mm-hmm. on their family, they're practicing on themselves. So, I don't want to just you know, like I said, no blanket. Yeah, because there, even sure. if they are just coming for like the prosthetic and the other effects, mm-hmm. they have to know that basic. Um, 
makeup application because yeah. you might have somebody that looks gory on one side but needs to look pretty well, on one side. And right? that's why I brought uh. up even the term corrective makeup because FX artists still need to know how to do corrective makeup. They yeah. still need to so know how important. to cover do up, concealer, conceal, foundation, yes. powder. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know. If you watch movies, obviously everybody has makeup on. I mean, yes. yeah. even if it looks very light, I know. And yeah. sometimes yeah. it looks really heavy and they need yeah. to know how yeah. to do either one. Yeah, yeah and the shading sense. and contour and all. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I do have a ex-sister-in-law, Daisy Sanders, who is a makeup artist. So, And she's always posting her fabulous eyes and lips and stuff, <laughs> you know. But, you know. Yeah, beauty is definitely like cross in with fx sometimes and and people will always ask me like on tours you know um am i gonna learn beauty um not we we, yeah (laughs) like some people will create different characters like you have the reign to create whatever character that you want in the fx program and if it needs beauty makeup we can always help with that Mm -hmm. you know if it happens like at horror nights every night um we've we're in our third night so Mm -hmm. far and i've been covering up a tattoo and that's corrective makeup you have to yeah. be able to color match because i'm in a house that it's an ip house and they can't have their michael myers tattoo showing every night yeah, yeah. so i have to cover that every night and you know you, those are things you you still you have, have to, to learn know. sure yeah. K- ip intellectual property yes kd is thank you <laughs> Katie's the makeup lead at the um Rob Zombie House at Universal. Oh, cool. Yes. Oh, yeah. wow. I was going to ask what projects you're working on or things in, that's a project, mm-hmm. right? Or things you've done in the past, anything you want to mention or that you're looking forward to in the future? Um, I will be starting at SeaWorld's uh, Halloween event, Spooktacular. So it's a lot mm-hmm. less gory and awesome. a lot yeah. more, a lot yeah. more glittery, sure. um, but it is a lot of fun. I yeah. love that event. I've done it several years now. Yeah. Um, and the... Uh, team that is put together for that is uh, it's put together by Jonah Levy from Blue Whale Studios and his wife Crystal. They're amazing, and they um, used to be based out of Orlando, but now they're based out of Atlanta, and they do some awesome stuff. Super actually, cool stuff. Yeah, definitely look them up. But uh, Jonah has like a knack for putting together a really solid team. So anytime he gives me a call, I'm like super excited. You're about on it. board. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, so very cool. Sea World starting. Ooh, I think this weekend is our first meeting, and then it starts next weekend. Oh my gosh! So I've never Halloween been is... to that at Sea World. Oh, I guess it's I shouldn't. Have, I shouldn't have said that. Uh, it hadn't started yet. Am I messing up your time? Sorry. No, 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 no. Okay. no. What was so, we always let people know. Yeah, we're, we're recording okay. this yeah. a little early, but um, we'll put links in the show notes to to everything you're talking about. Okay. So yeah. If you're, if you're listening Shout on your device, you can like scroll that. down and yeah. click a link for Mad Fab or Blue Wheels or the Sea World's Spectacular. Whale. Blue Whale. Oh, Blue Whale. Yeah, yeah. Like oh. Jonah you. and the That's Blue Whale. That's why we asked. Never again. would have called that. <laughs> no. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Halloween Horror Nights, which I love. You know yeah. that kind of stuff. So I'm going to ask the question. You have a very unique school here. Mm-hmm. How are you marketing to the community? <laughs> <laughs> We're going on podcast, Angie. Uh, well, you know, really our biggest uh, thing we do is social media. And even that is not huge. Um, our new beauty teacher, Anne Duvoisin, um, she is much better at it than me. But it's very, like I said a, a little while ago, it's like, when you, you wear a lot of hats when you mm-hmm. own a small business, any sure. small business owner knows this. It's like you're taking care of so many things all at once, of course. which is why I need KD because she's able to like be my right hand when I'm, you know, stuck on a project or whatever I might be focusing on. So Anne has been taking over social media a little bit because I've been slacking. So um, I do too. <laughs> yeah, we have Google ads. We, you know, have that kind of the basics on that. Uh, but other than that, we... We try to do like some community projects. We uh, the or- the Orange County Library has reached out to us a couple times. Yeah, we're doing a class with them actually. Mm-hmm. Oh, cool! We're so gonna teach ha- a class for them. Yeah, you're gonna teach an actual class. Mm-hmm. So, what would it be involved in that class? We're gonna do like a zombie demo, mm-hmm. and then oh, we're gonna cool. teach everyone like a bruise wheel, like use a bruise wheel, and like teach them how to do simple like cuts and stuff like that. Um, when I get the full information for that, guys, I'll, I'll yeah, send that over to you. Oh, yeah, too. Let oh us my know. gosh, um, cool. but it's open to the public too, so which is gonna be really cool. Yeah, so if you let us know the date, so we can yeah. kind of mm-hmm. ahead of time, we'll yeah. even just post it on our social media even sure. if it's before the um, actual. Good posting job. of the yeah, yeah the and podcast. Then another cool thing that we're going to be doing uh, is the Orlando Ballet reached oh, out to us. Really excited oh, about that one. Very yeah. cool. So oh, wow, they are putting on Vampires Ball, 
which is their October ballet. Uh, the opening night is on Halloween. So they had contacted mm-hmm. us about having a relationship. If they, you know, they need makeup done, they thought our students might need, you know, some experience out in the field. I am like super excited about this. Wow. I know I told you guys I'm like obsessed with the vampires. So they were yeah. like, Vampires Ball. I was like, I'm in. Like, yeah, what are we doing? That's all I need to know. Yeah. yeah. That's all you had to say. But it's, it's, at, it's at Dr. Phillips. It's like, yeah. yeah. And it sounds really cool. I mean, I don't know if we're likely even allowed to be talking. I mean, they probably are okay with it. By but the time that it comes out, I think that it'll be one on. Because they're going to be, we're going to be in like their uh, playbills and stuff. So oh, we're, yeah. we're, that's another marketing thing. We're going to be establishing a really good relationship that's with them. And, and Opera Orlando. We've been yes. in their playbill. We provide oh, makeup cool. to them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask, any local theaters or, you know, smaller theaters? Do any of the smaller theaters need not, that? Not done? yet. I mean, not, the thing not about that knows small about theater, us yet, yeah. at least, I guess. The thing about small theaters is typically they will have talent do their own. Yeah. So it's like a little bit harder to be like involved in that because they're like, now nah, we got it. Yeah. But if anybody needs it, you know, give us a call. Yeah. yeah. So okay. when you first said ballet, I was thinking that the sort of beauty makeup is what they were asking for. But when you said the vampire thing, but both. They need both. I guess yes. it is both. Yeah. 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 For ballet, I mean, they still want to look like pretty. I sure. Think, you know, they have some. This sounds very like they elegant. Need- Elegant, mm-hmm. spooky makeup. We're gonna. I think we're gonna have our beauty class actually try to help out with that mm-hmm. one. I really want to go to that. Yeah, so, it sounds cool. I mean, mm-hmm. just telling you. Yeah. <laughs> I've never been to a ballet. I can honestly say. Well, they said that it's. What did they if describe it as? If there's gonna be one to go to, a vampire one sounds yes. pretty cool. They yes. said it was like Mel Brooks meets something else, and I was like, "What, what? Mel Brooks?" It's it, dark humor, is what yeah, they said. So it's oh, dark really? Yeah. They said it's gonna be kind of. You'll funny. like it because we oh, love I would plays. like that. Like, sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, we love shows. That's what we do for, for our sure. anniversary every year. Is we go to a play mm-hmm. and our favorite restaurant. Yep. So I think that will be yeah perfect. Yeah, yeah, opening night Halloween, and then it goes through November third, I believe. Yeah, so it's just that weekend, but check it out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we will. Sounds interesting. So. You've already sh- shared some, but uh, do you guys have any success stories of your students that you would like to share? Things they've, I mean, there's yeah. some pretty big ones you've already sort of shared with yeah. us. Uh, you know, somebody asked me that recently. They were like, have any of your students like worked on movies? And I was like, well, we've only been open three years, so not yet. Mm-hmm. But right. I, it will happen. Yeah, I very much believe that. And the other thing is working in this industry, it's like the people that are really, really passionate about it and they are committed to it. They get, get there. work. Yeah, yeah get you there. can tell. Yeah, one of our students is in Pennsylvania, and she is oh, doing. She's awesome. Yeah, yeah, we love her. And what is she, she doing in Pennsylvania? She, um, she happened to just meet someone. Um, I recently was in Pennsylvania, and I like met up with her to like talk to her, yeah. and and she had um, met someone at a photo shoot, I believe, mm-hmm. and then uh, he saw that she did like really good work, basically, and now she's working full time in his studios, and. She is wow. doing insane work there. I think he makes masks full time for does. Haunt. He does. It's so called, like haunted attractions. Yeah. By oh, his that product. is amazing. Oh, wow. And yeah. see, you never know. You yeah. never there's, know. So was- there's like a whole convention called Trans World, and it is like all haunt based. Uh, it's in the Midwest, Industry. right? Yeah, yeah. It's like, I, th- I don't know if it moves every year, but I think it's always um, in like Michigan or somewhere up there. Yeah. yeah. So if you own a haunt or you're like a haunt enthusiast or you're putting on a haunted maze or something, it's like that is like the place you go. So mm-hmm. she was there selling masks and next year she's going back. And that so, is really cool. But she's one of those students. I mean, as soon as she started, I was like, well, she's going to work. Yeah. I just knew it because mm-hmm, I could mm-hmm. tell how committed she was to it and right. I could tell that she was serious about it and it was like nothing was going to stop her. It wasn't even an option. That's mm-hmm. a really cool story. Yeah. I can't that's... I can't help but wonder also just with this type of business because it's a niche kind of thing mm-hmm. but it's it's got applications in so many different careers. It makes me wonder if you have students that have gone on to do stuff you don't know. Probably. I mean, not everyone's going to contact you and let you know they got work right, somewhere. Right. Yeah. I'm really... We sign a lot of NDAs in the industry as well. So yeah. it's yeah. very well possible that yeah. we yeah. non disclosure sure. about I know. what they're working mm-hmm. on. And mm-hmm. you know, it's funny. I, I was excited to do this interview when Angie first mentioned you guys, and I had all these questions about. Um, what projects have you worked on and all? And I've, I've tiptoed around it because I, I work for an engineering firm and we did the Star Wars thing, but we do work with uh, theme parks and stuff. Same kind of thing where you can't talk about it. Can't so I don't want to put you on the hook for that, yeah. mm-hmm. but it's personally very interesting to me. Yes. Um, you know, and that shows right there how much of a serious gig you can get from doing this. Absolutely. Um, especially in this town. So something that I really hope one of our students go into is like, 
ocular painting so like fake eyes or like yeah i know that would be cool that's like something i was reading about recently that i'm like oh i hope one of our students go into that and like creating like the veining on like false eyes and stuff to match the the other irises yeah wow yeah yeah yeah. i think that would be really neat and i feel like someone could go into that but not yet but i'm hoping yeah i should add that into the tours i normally talk about how you can we uh we teach them how to do like impressions and stuff for um, teeth yeah. yeah yeah we teach them so, how to make like custom fit character dentures it's basically like a retainer but with like you know fake but, teeth yeah. on the yeah. outside of it yeah because it has to be able to the actor whoever's wearing it has to still be able to talk mm-hmm, right mm-hmm. Yep. and move mm-hmm. their mouth i have a question about so when they go through the program it's not a normal school where you have your graduation day <laughs> right but i'm sure there's certain requirements that you want them to meet mm-hmm. so what is like their final project? Is it something they have to turn in things they have to perfect? Mm -hmm. So their final project that they work on is an encapsulated silicone multi-piece prosthetic with character dentures. So they have to do a character creation. Yeah. And then they're graded on like all portions of it. Right. So they have to do character creation. They do a sculpture of it. They have to learn how to mold it in multi pieces, multiple pieces. um, And they will learn how to mold it in fiberglass and epoxy. Uh, And then they'll learn how to make encapsulated silicone prosthetics, how to apply them. They have to make teeth that match with this. And then they have to apply it all in a day. Mm -hmm. And then they're graded on like the final look. But then they're also graded on, you know, the cleanliness of the mold. Professionalism. Professionalism. Oh, cool. mm -hmm. So it's like a whole Mm -hmm. package grading. The entire program leads up to to you know the the final outcome like your final project so you can use almost everything that you've learned and make this crazy creature and Mm -hmm. you know we we teach airbrush Mm -hmm. so they're gonna learn how to like airbrush stuff or yeah everything builds on itself yeah Yeah, of course wow Mm -hmm. is that what we saw when you walked us through the room back there those so they're working on they're working on masks right now so that they're like uh well they're on their second pro the the uh, curriculum got a little bit swapped this uh, this class just because of our move. It was kind of like, yeah. oh my gosh, it was mm-hmm. kind of hard when you're to work around it yeah because yeah. i know i mentioned to you guys but the move was somewhat unexpected that uh, my old yeah. landlords were like hey actually we need the building back and i was like what oh my god we gotta move <laughs> yeah, but what right a blessing now, now. you're in oh, a yeah, no, funeral great. home mm-hmm. it's great i'm yeah, super it was meant happy to be. my yeah. new landlord's like the nicest man i've ever met in my life he like brought me orange juice the other day he was like i went and got like fresh squeezed orange juice here's a gallon for nice. you I was like, oh my god so nice love it <laughs> wow. uh but anyways so no so they're working on uh they're working on latex masks right now so that is supposed to be their first project in the lab so uh they're technically on their second project in the lab because we had to do their uh second one first and blah blah um but no so they're not there yet but this is their first like big you know large scale project um Mm -hmm. fabricating because at first the first five weeks they're not even in there they're only in the application room. They're learning how to do the basics, mm-hmm. of course. Injuries, bald caps, handling hair, old age, that kind of stuff. And I don't even think. I mean, I think about that stuff, but yeah, it's all that mm-hmm. you got to cover up the hair, facial hair, stuff yeah. like that, right? You Our job is that. for you to not know we did anything, mm-hmm. right? I gotcha. mean, that's like we don't want people to even know that we touched the actor. You're supposed to forget we were there. Yeah. Right. right? Yeah, you're not supposed to see the flaws mm-hmm. or anything. Mm-mm. That's awesome. Well, you know me because I pay attention to details. And yeah. we'll see movies sometimes. Heather, you'd mentioned where sometimes it's too much makeup. Mm-hmm. And you see that mm-hmm. in like full-blown Hollywood productions where I'm like, the dude has makeup on. <laughs> yeah. Straight up <laughs> lipstick. And he, and he's not playing a role that would right. have lipstick. I know. Right. We just watched something yeah. where it was, oh, it was um, Stranger Things. Yes. It was so bad. Yes. What? Oh my God. Who? What? The you guy know? in the sailor suit. Well, I forgot what his Steve name is. Steve Harrington. Steve and... Harrington has lipstick on, and it's too much lipstick. <laughs> and the bad guy. What? You know the the, the oh the guy with the guy mullet. That everybody eggs. Oh, uh, Billy. Billy Transit. Billy. Billy. That's yeah. right. Yeah. It's. It, eyeliner. I'm telling you, go back and watch it, I and mean, you'll see. I they used see. to wear eyeliner, so yeah. maybe that really. No, was but just... you can tell the Harrington kid. He's not. He's not trying to have it on. He but just it's has just, luscious it's, lips. It's badly buddy. applied. <laughs> Steve Harrington is a heartthrob, so I'm going to pretend I didn't hear any of that. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Only <laughs> you'll just want to kiss him more <laughs> with his kissable can, can cherry chapstick lips. Cherry chapstick. That's <laughs> he's right. my favorite character in the show. He's yeah. great, but he's. And he's got lipstick on. I'm just telling you. Guys, I, it was the 80s. Maybe he had lip smackers. <laughs> it maybe. might have been. Oh it might have been. Maybe. So with your, um, when your students create their projects, 
do you kind of start them a portfolio of things that they can, you know, take on job? Um, oh, I, yeah, we are, in the, we are in the photo room. Yes, yes yeah. we are. So we encourage them to take pictures of everything they're doing, even if it's not in like a formal studio setting. Because if they're sculpting something, I mean, I think they should take pictures of it every day. Because I then would you say see from the, the beginning course. to the end, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm, your mm-hmm. very first thing you do. Yeah. And every time you do something, you mm-hmm. can see the progression. If you want to of- go work in a lab. They want to know what your molds look like. They want to see a ton of different stuff. They want to see your references, not just of your makeup, but like your sculpts, your molds. And, um, you know, they, they want to see all that yeah, stuff. Of course, yeah, of course. Yeah. They want, they want to see how you work. But in we the also lab. let them leave with like a full portfolio. We have like a nice camera so they can take pictures and stuff. So um, when they leave here, they can go straight to an employer, hand them a portfolio and be like, here, this is what I do. You yeah, know? that's yeah. amazing. I'm that, trying that, to pull that's... up a photo on my on our Instagram because we have an Instagram. It's VampFX, um, V-A-M-P-F-X. But uh, one of the pictures is from one of our students who did uh, the Pale Man character from... Um, Pan's Labyrinth. So she was doing that as her mask. And this is like the. the I saw that out there. Yeah. But that's day one, right? So it's like yeah. hilarious seeing like sculpt, yeah. the sculpt and the. Uh, like, can I see that again? Yeah, so it's that's the best they could do on day one. Right. And then what they learned how to do. Mm-hmm. She had never sculpted anything. That was the first time she did wow. it. We have a lot of wow. kids that come in here who have never sculpted, never that's even great. touched mm-hmm. anything. And they, they come out with incredible masks. And I love to point that out in tours too to people that. They're like, do I need to be creative to come here? No. No. Um, I mean, we, we've yeah. built kids up. No, so. but yeah. I, I'm also a firm believer. I talk to people, I'll say, you know, one of the questions I ask in the interview is like, do you think you're artistic? Do you consider yourself to be artistic outside of doing makeup? Do you paint? Do you draw? Mm-hmm. Any, do you do, you know, play music? Anything is, you know, everything it can be creative. And a lot of people are like, well, I can't draw. I suck at drawing. Yeah. I suck. And I'm like, okay, first of all, the negativity's got to go. Yeah. yeah. But you need confidence. Yes. And, mm-hmm. and you know, anytime you so called like stink at something, practice makes a huge difference it does. Sure like, does. for everything for everything you know <laughs> so people who are like i'm bad at drawing it's like well everyone's probably kind of bad at it at of first course. so you just have mm-hmm. to like practice it and that's everything that we're doing you know? Yep. you know you can make that stick figure better oh yeah no you can to Absolutely. me it's, to me it's that creative spirit though not everybody has that creative spirit but mm-hmm. if you do then you're you can do anything and even mm-hmm. if you want it you can have it yeah yeah. Like, yeah, you can the be commitment, creative right? if you want to. But, but I think right. if you don't have the creative spirit, you don't even want you're you're never going to show up here anyway. You know, you're not into it. You you want to yeah. be an accountant or something. You, you yeah, know? which is important. Numbers. Shout yes. out to my accountant. Yes, yes. we need those. <laughs> <laughs> so uh. we we said at the beginning when we talked to you guys that we started this podcast because we wanted to be more involved in the community. Mm-hmm. We wanted to. Um, let other people know about small businesses like yours. Mm-hmm. That's really what we're kind of all about. So you're sure, teaching sure. at the library. There's going to be kids that come to the library that see that. And maybe that is their new, what mm-hmm. they want to be when they grow up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's community. Yeah. There's you know? a lot of direct, uh, there's a lot of direct transition or, or connection between what you guys are doing in the community. Even if you think of like the theme parks, cause they're here, they're not moving Right. Yeah, to, they're staying local. You know, this is all mm-hmm. local. You're driving more local business with your students. Maybe which is- starting more small businesses. Somebody, you know, starts a mold company. Yeah. Like you talked about the I, other one. I mean, I'm yeah. like a massive cheerleader for everybody that goes here too so like i I have like such a passion for our graduates and our students because i'm like i want them to do what they want to do for a living yeah because work can be boring and i don't want them to be no i want them to love their work i want them to like love what they do um so yeah and i want to push them out of the nest and fly yeah do you guys do do you do like a graduation for them what do you do we do it's small and corny just like us so that's all right (laughs) i think last Mm -hmm. our last graduation was probably our best one because i was like hey katie can you make a uh, graduation video and she put together an awesome graduation video she's like what song should i put i was like oh i got cheesy i was like put Uh, the nickelback song like oh oh my gosh (laughs) and then i put vitamin c (laughs) vitamin c i was like put the cheesiest song yeah Our FX students, they get to do something really cool. Like the day before graduation, Mm -hmm. they learn how to do like slit throats and blood gags. And so (gasps) at our old location, there'd be fake blood all over the parking lot. 
oh my everywhere. gosh so um it's a good thing we have another standalone building um but yes it's we were worried about great, that yeah. when we were looking for a new place yeah. because if we were in like a, a strip with like other businesses and we're like out in the parking lot like cutting throats and blood's like spraying everywhere yes. and, yeah you know that that day is mm-hmm. a lot of fun it's like bloody field day everybody's like that's in the what i was gonna say lot. it's like water day yeah they're like getting oh, hosed wow. down they're like covered in blood it's that sounds like, awesome yeah it's so messed up that it is awesome <laughs> it's like yeah <laughs> They get like a full pump and everything, and a lot of the kids they'll it won't just be like a slit throat. Like they'll dress up as characters and yeah. like oh, they get make into this it. Full th- oh, it's hilarious! Oh my gosh. Videos so are on we our have Instagram. to be invited yeah. to one of those. Oh, that's totally. be amazing. And we, and we I will have to check out the videos too. That's great. Sounds like a Tarantino mm-hmm. movie. In the one of our lot. students who uh, she's she's done a lot of really cool stuff, um, Victoria. Yeah. But one of our students, so on her graduation day, she like had ordered a little like cap, you know, like a graduation cap mm-hmm. with a tassel and she's like posing like thumbs up and her neck's like cut open <laughs> and it's like so macabre. Like oh, where else would that be okay? But here, oh, like, I love it. It's yeah. pretty cool. It That's is pretty great. cool. Well, thank you guys so much for sitting down and talking to us. This place yes. is amazing. We could keep going. Yeah. And we really Same. could. Same. We're already at almost an hour, just so everybody knows. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Really? <laughs> yeah. I didn't realize it. Yeah. Thank I'm you telling guys so you. much. It goes by. <laughs> it does. This is really cool, though. And uh, so we'll definitely stay in touch with you guys. We encourage you to stay in touch with us. And Absolutely. we will post all your links. And yeah. uh, Anytime you have something going on, if yeah. maybe you're doing an open house or something for people to come and check it out once you get everything mm-hmm. all together. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. We'll let people know. Yeah. Send them your way. Cool. Thanks, guys. You're welcome. Yeah. Well, yeah. thank you. This has been great. And then I want to take some pictures on the way out, if you don't mind. Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right, guys. Well, stay tuned, and we'll be right back with the Information Station. So, hey, everyone, and welcome back to the information station. Before we get rolling, I want to one more time thank Heather Files and Katie Parrish for joining us from the VAMP school. KD. KD. Is that what I said? Yeah. You said Katie really fast, so it sounded like Katie, but it is very specifically KD. Yes. KD. She spells it different like I do. She does. It's very cool. So... Uh, and they are very cool. We really liked them, oh my if you God, couldn't tell. Oh, they were tell. totally cool. So looking forward to uh, sort of continuing a connection with them and kind of seeing how they're doing and going by potentially and getting some supplies for our Halloween costumes. Yeah. And they're going to let us know when they do their graduation because they do that cool... Um, thing in the parking lot. With yeah, the, they do something special in the parking lot for their graduating class where they get to like use little blood packets and stuff. Yeah, that and we they, just talked about it with yeah, them. Yeah, I know. It's, yeah. um, it's pretty cool. Yes, it is very cool. So I meant to get pics and I you, during the interview, you will have heard us say, oh yeah, we'll post some pics and we just promptly packed up That's and left. That's because we, we chat. We We're do chatters. Chat. <laughs> and we chatted beyond the end of the interview. We yeah. chatted a lot before the interview. <laughs> yep. Um, and I can't say enough how cool this school is, aside from the fact that it is in a um, in an old uh, funeral, home? Re- uh, funeral home. Yeah, I almost said totally retirement cool. home. It is totally cool. I mean, it's just, it's really hard to envision, which is why I wish I would have got the pics. But you can go to the website, which I'll put a link in the show notes, as we said before, mm-hmm. so you can see some of the pics of the work they do there. It is amazing. That basically comes down to two different options they have there in terms of the programs. There's a 10-week course for beauty professional makeup where you can learn to work as a print, television, or film makeup artist or a makeup artist for the runway. Super cool stuff. Get you into the industry. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're, they're basing it on um, their skill set and their expertise and how that works and what you need to learn to do that. And that's very cool. And I think it's great. But of course, the thing that's most exciting to me is the other course, which is a 22 week course for modern effects. And that's the one where they teach you still for stuff like film and television, but for special effect makeup artists, I'm talking latex, dental, airbrush, mask making, blood effects. Special Uh, effects stuff is amazing. Just really cool. Prosthetics. Yeah, uh, you know, but I did. I do like also 
they have to teach them that other basic stuff too. Because if you don't know the basics of how to cover dark circles up under somebody's eyes or how to put a foundation on so that you can put those top layers yep. on, you have to know how to do that kind of beauty makeup. Yep. Basics. Some of it, yeah. And the color, like the opposite colors. I know a little bit about that from the little bit of uh, uh, makeup that we do for Halloween and stuff, but how you can put a uh, green, uh, like a green tinted makeup on red and how yeah. it like nullifies it to get rid of the red that yeah. kind of stuff is uh, well and also how um heather and katie were talking about when they you know when when they're doing like their projects where they're doing the masks and stuff like this yep if you have a a guy who has never taken any of the makeup general makeup courses on how to you know do a shadow or anything and he has a vision for a female mask yep he's got to know how to do that stuff of course oh yeah you know so that it will turn out amazing right and look very lifelike yes so i think that's really great that they're combining the two i do too and, and, it, and it stands the reason why that's a sort of a base yeah. that they need and i'll tell you i since we did the interview with them and here on the show, it looks like it was five minutes ago, but you know, it was a week and changing. Mm -hmm. um, I've been following them on social media and they, and I think it's KD that manages that. I'm not sure, but they will post like a new mask. They did like a Hellraiser mask the other day. And I think it was Chatterbox. Oh, I missed that one. I and it was so cool. Yeah, on Instagram. So um, I don't know. I'm, I'm really glad we made a connection with them. That's right up my alley. Oh, I did see Chatterbox. Did that you? one was great. Wasn't it? With the teeth yes. showing. Oh, yes. That yeah. one was amazing. So do you remember the movie Hellraiser from the 80s? I do, but I don't remember... Like Pinhead was the popular one, yeah, the guy of with all the nails in his head. But Ch I think it was Chatterbox was one. I think that's the name, or Chatter Chatters or something. Yeah. I can't remember his name now. But uh, I saw that on there, and it kind of took me back because those were like horrifying movies when I was a kid. Yeah, that I mean, oh, that place is just so cool, and what a great alternative for kids that are looking for, or adults, you sure. know, whoever that are looking for an alternative. Um career path yeah right Agreed. because we all talk about you know doing something we're passionate in yep a lot of people probably don't know what they're passionate in but they know they want to be creative yeah and so i just thought this was cool me too not only creatively but taking um doing a school like this taking classes like this could lead into other Aries too. All different industries. I mean, yeah. I only mentioned film and television, but so I was thinking prosthetics. Yeah, and I think we touched a little bit. We did. Yeah, on the in, in the interview, you know, my my short term memory, I can't remember. <laughs> but I was thinking because they're making these things look so lifelike. Yeah. Right. There, there's got to be. There's a need for that with people who have prosthetics. Yeah, indeed. So we, we have the, the great engineering and mechanics that go behind these really cool prosthetics that they make for people that are maybe, you know, missing a limb due to a birth defect or an injury oh, sure. or a disease or something. But it, it's still, you still want it to look like it's part of you. Realistic, yeah. Right? And more realistic. And they are doing that yeah. somewhat. But I, I did a little research and... um. There was a website that I came across called Live Science, and it talked about how they're now making like an electronic skin. So if you combine that electronic skin with the, you know, people that can make very lifelike looking hands or legs or ears or noses, whatever it may be, this electronic skin can actually um, get warm to the touch. Oh, wow. It's elastic like human skin. So the movement is better. Yeah. Um, and it is actually sensitive to pressure and temperature and humidity. So I think about things like maybe a mother holding a baby, right? Right. If she has a prosthetic that could simulate what a real, you know, the real warmth the of an feeling, arm or the sure. feeling that the baby would get that feeling. Doesn't it make you want the, the just, possibilities of the future? It makes me think, you know, if you've ever like burned your hand or something, then you're in, you're inclined to first go, 
why the heck do we even have nerve endings that feel like that? But, yeah. you know, if you have a prosthetic, and of course it's not going to hurt you, but it's, it could damage the prosthetic. So there's all kinds of applications where, yeah. you know, maybe you lean on a hot stove and you pull away because you're getting your sensors telling you that's warm. Yeah, because um, those things are expensive to make. Oh, indeed. You know, even the ones that do not look lifelike that they used to make with leather or oh, sure. you know, other materials, they're not real looking, but they're still very expensive, very expensive. to make. And, and it, you know, unless you're a full grown adult, there is a, um, you know, I've seen where kids that are missing a leg, uh, I saw on Reddit a few weeks ago, this girl, and it showed her standing against a wall with all of her prosthetic legs throughout the years, you know, going backwards as they're getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And like the first couple had like a built in shoe. Yeah. And it was neat to see like her progress, but you can see they the get them fitted every it. year or something. Oh, yeah. It could be even more often. Yeah. Very expensive. And yeah. I mean, this could even be not only a job, but maybe something that people could do pro bono to yeah. a certain am amount for practice. Oh, right? true. Yeah. You know, we're always trying to think of different ways like that, how people can give back to the community or they have, you know, maybe they take applications for people that they give a, you know, fit a certain person for the rest of their life or one or something. I don't know. I'm just throwing things out there for sure. how we can, you know, give back to the community. No doubt. And you, you, I think you had said something to me earlier about 3D printing for this. Oh yeah. So there are three, there is 3D printing, but you know, I've, I think electron, you know, um, computers are great for stuff like that. Sure. But to me, there's still something about a human creating something for another human. Yeah. That but that's, that's gives still, more realism to it. I don't know. That's what still, it is. though, just for clarity, that's still 3D printing. You can buy a 3D printer and have it in your house. In fact, some of the guys I know from the office yeah, have yeah, them at home. So yeah. ha and so they will make a 3D printed part for, you know how I just sort of uh, MacGyvered the, those poles for the mm -hmm. kayaks to hold? So if there's a part they need, they can't find online, they'll design it in a 3D program like AutoCAD or Revit, print it, and now they got the part. That's and, amazing. Yeah. And you, so, do you have to be an engineer for that, though? No, or do you no, no, no. 3D printing can print from all kinds of applications. You do need a 3D model of the item. But what some people do, you were talking about design pro bono or whatever. Yeah. What some people do is they design a thing, they upload the 3D model in the format that, that 3D printers can read, and then they just post it for free. So, hey, if you need this thing, download this and print it. And so what I was thinking when you told me mm -hmm. about 3D printing for prosthetics, you know, it could be... Someone has a design that is certainly not as high end as like the skin, but the possibility of being able to print a 3D prosthetic for a friend, uh, colleague, yeah. someone you're just trying to help, or even yourself in your house is really neat. Interesting. You know, you could, and in that case, you could change it as you go, yeah. as you grow. So. Yeah. I liked that. It's pretty, I didn't mean to rhyme. But Change it as you go and it, as you grow. Here goes Angie again <laughs> with a sneak peek of last week. But anyway, I thought that was really cool about the electronic skin. I mean, coupling that with designing what a hand or a leg or yeah. any body part should look like, that's pretty amazing. It is amazing. Um, so anyway, uh, it brings me back to the future and, you know, mm -hmm. what, what, how things are going to work in the future. It's just going to be... Yeah. Better and better. And I'm really interested in just letting more, well, I'm going to let more people know, especially younger kids who I feel are very creative about VAMP. Oh, because, me too. Indeed. You know, so many kids, like even your son, you know, he doesn't know what he wants to do right now. So sure. he's moving to Seattle. He's going to kind of discover himself. Yep. Very cool. Explore the world a little bit, different parts, you know, figure yeah. it out. Right. But, you know, there's some kids that know they are very creative, but they, where do I want to go with that? Sure. And this is like amazing for oh, that. Oh, if you showed me a school like that, I'm, I'm saying very specifically me, because I, yeah, I don't want to just make it sound like I'm saying this to help promote the school. But if you showed me a school like this when I was in my last year of high school, I would have been there before summer was over. Yeah. You know, I really would have. That This is one of the coolest things ever to me. And here, especially in Central Florida, there's work. I, I know there's work everywhere. Work. I, I mean, know there's work everywhere. But there, we've got, you know, Universal Halloween, Halloween yeah. Horror Nights. We've got, um, the theme parks are here. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, here you think about the West Coast where they're doing the movies. And it just seems like, it seems like a career path where... 
the possibilities are endless because like you said, and like they said in the interview, I immediately think of movies. I immediately yeah. think of um, all the, the special effects for uh, uh, theme parks and stuff like that. Yeah. But then there's, you know, the prosthetics. There's the the medical side of it where Katie was telling us about yeah. the staged trauma from like a plane crash. It just goes on and on. And so anyway, I agree with you. Great yes. school. And uh, we're very happy to continue promoting and getting updates. And I can't wait to go watch the bloodbath. I know. And we are lot. going to post that. I find it dangerous. <laughs> yes. So yeah. prepare yourself because that's going to be graphic. You have to make a really cool video. I will. To go with that. I certainly will. That will be so cool. And they will be very appreciative of that. But they are very cool. So check them out. We will have um, all the links to them on this latest episode. And if you know somebody that you think would you know, this would make a great profession for, please pass the information along to them because it's a great group of people down there. Yep. They'll be with like-minded people, which is always a cool environment to learn in, yep. you know? And um, and they've had a lot of like job placement and stuff too. And a lot of the people from Universal have came and gone to this school to learn even more techniques. That's right. For their skill set. Yeah. So pretty cool. So very cool way for us to kick off the month of Halloween and Hops. And we are we are looking forward to continuing this month because yeah, doing a little traveling this month for yeah, the podcast. We'll be doing a broadcast from a different state for the first time mm -hmm. ever. So we're excited to go go check out a hops farm in North Carolina. We're going to be checking out a hops farm here in town. We've got some other Halloween related stuff we're going to be doing a special about uh, mm -hmm. remotely as well. Well, North Carolina, it's a brewery. So we're going to a full well. That's true, but it's also a hops farm. So yeah, they grow hops too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they grow their hops and they make beer from their hops, mixing with other hops. It's going to be really oh, yeah. cool. We won't give away. A t don't give away too much oh, okay, because there's some great surprises for that one. There really is. Yeah, and there really is. So we'll be doing some sightseeing up there too. No, I can't wait. And you, you know, we're gonna um, doing zip lining and mountain biking, mm -hmm. and I can't wait. So I'm sure we'll have plenty of GoPro footage and stuff from that trip that yes. I'll be putting on our YouTube channel as well. Yeah. Um, before we wrap up, I also wanted to give a quick shout out to Richard at Target Optical. So we don't normally do this kind of thing, but. For necessarily for our own individual, uh, uh, what do you call it, businesses that we go to. But every once in a while, when you get customer service that is just top notch, you have to mention it. And I have to say, every time I've been there, Dr. Bonnie is great, but Richard in particular, who manages the whole place, is super friendly. Uh, if we've called back and we're looking for, not to give too much away, but we're looking for uh, contact lenses for Halloween. They don't provide them, but he was able to kind of, you know, tell me what to look out for and to be careful and make sure you get the right stuff. But just in general, every time yeah. we come in there, super friendly, best customer service I've had in a long time anywhere. The whole crew there is great. And I just wanted to, to give them a shout out, which we That's don't cool. normally do, but That's great. I thought about it. The It was like the Coming third- Coming from customer service- background well, i appreciate that we well, you know it's funny like the third or fourth time we went by there in the past few months for various reasons of you know appointments for different people in the family it just dawned on me you just don't get that kind of welcome when you get there the kind of hey what's going on like we're friends you know and yeah. it was and that is awesome to me and i will keep going to that place because he's there so yeah. and Great. the whole family you know yeah. you go we all go. go yep so anyway and we wanted to give a shout out to Embellish Effects, which is a place in town. They do cosplay, they do makeup, they do wigs and more. We have historically gotten some of our stuff from them. We're going to get some stuff from them again this year, combined with the vamp people, combined with the stuff that we're making. So mm -hmm. we wanted to give a shout out to them because yeah. it is our, uh, we're, we're approaching the Velvet Sessions Halloween party. We are late getting our stuff together this year, but we are starting to yeah. put some of our costume It'll parts be together. One of those. It's going to be a rush <laughs> job, but we we always It'll do It'll it always be great. turns out great. Yeah, yeah. We talked to TJ down there. Yep, and um, he actually knew the girls from Vamp. Yes, he did. So that was pretty cool. It really was. And he does some pretty amazing work himself. He yes. was showing us some pictures. So he was yeah yeah. Great stuff. Really was. So anyway, we're going to wrap up, but we'd love to hear from you. Feel free to give us a call at 407-490-3899. Just to be clear, that is a voicemail for the show. So if you're 
afraid to call because you don't want to be on the air. That's not on the air. That's just a voicemail for the show. If you want us to air it on the air, we have been considering doing that for a while with voicemails. If you have thoughts, issues, questions, suggestions, you just want to say hi, you know, we'd love to hear from you about any yes. of it. Also find us on social media. Make sure you like our page. <laughs> you know, we look at those likes, you know. We do. And we count them. Count them all up. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that is so not true. Yeah. But we it, do appreciate it is nice them. to be liked. And it we really are appreciate yeah, we do appreciate it. And any of our social media is fine and DNG, Facebook, Instagram. And um just drop us a little line on there. Indeed. Give us some ideas about future shows. We're start I am starting actually the calendar for next year. So I'm going to actually sit down and try to map out the entire year. Yep. But, you know, of course, we can have some special episodes and stuff like that if yeah. something comes up. But I would like to get the whole entire year mapped out. I would, too, uh, just to have it yeah. mapped out. And even if we have to slide some dates because people's schedules change, we I think we've scheduled a few months at a time here and there. We knew September was going to be a gap because yeah. we just could not make. For the guests that we have lined up, uh, or at least have asked to join the show, or we've reached out to them, we've got a mix of both. Um, I think what we ran into was a combination of a couple of things, theming all of these people that have totally various, we should have called a potpourri, I guess. But the other thing is... <laughs> the melting pot. There you go. But the other thing is we, could, we couldn't make it work with schedules because of my travel. Yeah. It, it's hard sometimes. So yeah. we have to have those months that are just kind of like a this and that month. And it was right? fun. It was fun just yeah. goofing around between yeah. the two of us. But we're back on track now for guests again. That's right. And, um, and also, if you ever want to be a guest on the Fine and Dancy show, drop us a, um, a voicemail or... Voicemail, voicemail is yeah. great. Again, 407-490-3899 or email us. Email is a great way to let us know. Yeah, because then we can keep it. I think it's a little easier to track that way too. Yeah. And both of us can see it and yep. respond. one or the other can respond. No and matter we where always we're respond mm -hmm. to every single email we get. Yeah. But if you are interested on, you know, on being on the show, just let us know. Yes, indeed. And with that, we are done. That's it. That is it. Episode 28. Wrap it up. Wrap it up, baby. Put a little bow on it. Put it underneath the Christmas tree. Well, that'll be coming before you know it. <laughs> it sure is. All right. All right, guys. Well, remember, at the end of the day, it's, it's all, all fine, fine and dandy. <laughs>